Hey folks, Glenn May here with BassResource.com and today I want to talk to you about summer fishing. Yeah, that great time when we catch a lot of fish, the weather's nice and calm, it's been stable now, we've got past all those, you know, those fronts coming through in the spring, not so much rain, it's a great time to be out on the water. However, a lot of people have noticed that the fishing seems to be a lot more difficult. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. Let's figure out what's going on. So, what happens in the spring is a lot of the fish, they migrate up into shallow waters to spawn. So the majority of the population is up shallow. So you catch a lot of fish when you're casting shallow. In the summertime, a lot of them will move back out, either mid-depths or to deeper water. So a lot of people think, well, the fish have abandoned the shallows, are gone, you gotta go fish deep. You don't even find articles that say that. Okay, that's, that's not true. It's just that the majority of the fish aren't all up shallow now. Now they're scattered. This is what happens in the summertime. You're gonna find a good population of fish that are shallow, but you'll also find just as many that'll be mid-depth and in deep. So the key is, is trying to find them first of all, and number two, see which ones are active that day. It's gonna change. So let's start off with, with the shallow fish. What I like to do is, is I like to find lakes that have a lot of vegetation in them. If there's a lot of hydrilla, a lot of milfoil, coontail, lily pads, any kind of lake that's got a lot of vegetation like that, those weeds create a lot of oxygen, a lot of shade, a lot of shelter, and a lot of cover. Bait fish naturally go in there and insects also uh, feed and live in there. That's naturally going to attract the bass. So those are areas to, to hit. If your lake has a lot of weeds and stuff, focus on those areas during the summertime. You'd be really surprised how many fish are in there. Um, it just depends on the kind of weeds you have, whether you can hit it with, you know, you gotta go punching with, with jigs and punch through that matted vegetation, or if it's just under the surface, you might be able to bring a spinnerbait over the top of them or a shallow diving crankbait, something like that. Um, but that's the areas I would target if that's the majority of the cover available on the lake. Now, if your lake doesn't have a lot of vegetation, older reservoirs sometimes don't have that. Now you gotta focus more on structure. And what I mean by structure, that's any kind of contour change on the bottom. You're looking for humps, ridges, ledges, drop-offs, creek channels, long tapering points. Things like that is what you want to look for for structure. Now one of the key things I like to look for when I'm looking for structure and I'm looking on a map or a graph I'm just driving around the lake and looking, is I like to find structure that's near flats. It's got to have a flat nearby, someplace where they can go over and feed and then come back to that structure and feel comfortable in. So a hump or a point or a, uh, a ridge channel, a creek channel that comes in the bend that gets near a flat, that's an ideal place to look. Even if you're not marking fish on that, on those pieces of structure, definitely fish them, you might catch fish there. But don't just go to any structure and start fishing. It's, hey, it's summertime, I gotta fish deep, so I'm gonna go 30 feet deep and start fishing. Chances are you're not gonna be successful that day. What I like to do is when I first launch the boat, I flip on the graph and I take a look to see if I can't find any bait fish or any fish activity. Typical bait fish, you find a ball of fish somewhere, you know, bait fish at a certain depth. Then you don't always get that characteristic, you know, look on your depth finders. So typically what I do is I just try to find what's the average depth where I see most the most activity. Let's just say 15 foot, just for an example, at the 15 foot mark. Then I'll go try to find structure that intersects with that depth. Be it a, a hump or some kind of a point, something like that, that's the area where I'll target first. I'll go up and fish that area, and I'll fish a little bit below and a bit above it to see if I can't catch fish there. Because the bass, they're gonna key on the bait fish. They wanna, they're ambush, they're gonna use that, that structure to ambush those bait fish. So that's the, that's the depth you wanna look at. You'd be a lot more successful if you just do a little bit of hunting with your graph and find that sweet spot and then start fishing those those areas. And fish anything that would get down to that depth. If it's, you're fishing 30 feet deep, it's hard to get down there with a spinnerbait. So you're fishing jigs, you're fishing football head jigs, you're fishing Carolina rigs, uh, split shot, drop shot, anything that gets that bait down there and work that area. And you have to fish it according to how the fish bite. I'd like to go fast to slow. Try to fish as fast moving bait. If you're getting bites, great. But if you're not, then start slowing down until you get a bite. And again, fish in that depth zone. You'll figure it out. But even if you find those humps and ridges and points and whatnot on your map, 
there's going to be a sweet spot on it and you're just going to have to fish it to find that sweet spot. You're not going to have guaranteed success that you found a hump and start fishing and start catching fish. Fish those depths and find it. When you catch a fish, you want to know what depth they were at and where they were on that, that piece of structure. There might be something there like a rock, like a log, maybe a patch of grass, something that's holding them and that's the sweet spot. That's the spot on the spot and sometimes you can load up. Fish might be stacked up on that one spot. So pay close attention to where you were, with position with your boat, where you made that cast, and lock onto that, see if there's more fish sitting on that spot. You may have found a, a honey hole there. Now sometimes when I'm fishing a brand new lake and I don't know anything about it, I don't know if it's got weeds in it or if it doesn't or what's going on, I have, I have no idea what the pattern is, I don't even know how deep the lake is, is just go fish a point. Fish a long, tapering point that goes down into deep water. Typically, I just launch the boat and the first point I come to, I start fishing it. What I'll do is I'll start off deep and work my way in shallow. I don't want to bring that boat right up on top of the fish to fish that shallow water first. I might spook away all the fish that are positioned on that point. So I start off deep, I'm throwing like a football head jig, I'm throwing deep diving crankbaits, Carolina rig or a split shot rig. I start off as deep as I need to, depending on how, depth that, how deep that lake is and then start gradually working my way on up. I'll work one side of the point and then the other and then across it until I get start getting them shallow where I can start hitting it with different types of baits like spinner baits, shallower driving, not diving crank baits, or even top water baits. It's a great way to approach summer if you don't have a graph and not sure what's going on. I've been really successful doing that on a lot of different lakes. It's just a great way to start. Now, I want to talk a little bit about oxygen levels because that comes up a lot when you're talking about summertime fishing and how that affects the positioning of the bass. While it's true that as the water temperature rises above 80 degrees and starts getting warmer than that, it starts to lose its ability to hold oxygen. Don't key on that one factor as being, okay, water temperature is 87 degrees, that must mean all the fish are deep. That might not be the case. A couple things to keep in mind. If there's lots of wind, you get the water churning up, and that's going to oxygenate the water and it's going to hold up more oxygen that way even though the water temps up. And like I mentioned before, if you've got a lot of weeds and grass and vegetation, they produce oxygen. They also produce shade and that means that the water underneath those mats of vegetation is a lot cooler so it will hold more oxygen. So you want to fish, even if it's 80, 90 degree water temperature, pay attention to those what factors because there could be a boatload of fish up in the shallows in those weeds and you're out fishing 30 feet deep and you're wondering why you're not catching fish. Or you had a real windy day or it's windy right now and that's churning up the waves and getting a lot of oxygen in there. And those, that might move all the fish up, the bait fish that knocks all the zooplankton down, the bait fish will move up, the wind is oxygen in the water, the fish will be right in there and you can have really high uh, water temperature. So don't key on just the water temperature and think, oh, the oxygen level's low. I better not fish shallow. You, you might miss a good bite. The other thing to keep in mind is what's something that's called the thermocline. That sets up on a lot of lakes, not all of them. So don't think that because you can't find it on your depth finder, <laughs> it, it means something's wrong. There's, there's a lot of lakes where the thermocline doesn't set up. But what that is, is as the summer progresses, the upper water level, it, it becomes more dense. When that happens, it's tougher and tougher for the oxygen to reach the lower depths of the water the lower water column. So at some level you'll get pretty much even water temp and then there'll be a short range where there'll be a quick water temp drop and then it'll be a lot colder underneath it. It's this layer, this middle layer that's basically a barrier if you will between the oxygen, uh, water with oxygen in it and the water below it that doesn't have any. In it. If and you can see that on the graph you'll notice you'll see a really kind of a, a thick line that's a few feet deep it's not black, but it's like a dark gray line Large somewhere back. just right in the middle of the, of the depth finder. There's nothing wrong with your depth finder. That's a thermocline. It's real important to note that because the water below that doesn't have a lot of oxygen, not enough to, to sustain life. Not that the fish won't go there. They will for brief stints. They will go down in there, but they can't stay there for very long. So that means the majority of all the fish, if not all of them, are above that level. It's important to note that because again, if you read the books and say, oh, I got to fish deep in the summertime, I'm going to go fish 30, 40 feet deep. If that thermocline's at 15 foot deep, you're never going to get a bite. The bait fish aren't there. No bait fish, no bass, no bites.
Okay, so you need to pay attention to that thermocline, and this could it can get higher and higher up in the it could be only seven feet deep, six feet deep in some lakes. This is why sometimes in the summertime you can catch a bunch of fish really shallow during the heat of the day. The water temps are way up there. Now, why are the fish that shallow? Well, it's because that thermocline is really up there, and there's there's no place else for them to go. Even though it's not ideal, it doesn't have the ideal oxygen amount, but below it is not at all, right? You can't get below that thermocline, they're not going to uh, live very long. So they will move up shallow if they have to. So you got to pay attention to multiple factors in trying to figure out what positions the fish. The weed cover that's availability uh, av available, the structure, the time of day, oxygen level, and also the sun. That positions the fish a lot too. Look for the shady areas. If you fish, say, docks, <clears throat> and you're fishing in the morning, you're, you're catching fish on one side of the docks, pay close attention, a lot of times that's the shady area of the dock. Well, as the day progresses, that shade's going to shift as that sun moves through the sky, and that's going to reposition those fish. Or they may be on bushes or trees or what have you. Pay attention to where that shade is as it moves throughout the day, and you can stay on top of those fish. So those are some of the tips for summer fishing. I hope those help. For more tips and tricks like this, visit BassResource.com. Oh,